G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I've done it, I finished my exams and I will officially be graduating from university imminently. It only took me six and a half years and resulted in me accumulating $50,000 in hex debt, but it's cool, it's fine. That is not gonna be a problem. But the main part is I've got a little bit of time now before I go to Europe where I can just smash out some videos. That starts today where I will be taking you through my mid-season All-Australian team. Now, if you happen to see on Instagram or Facebook recently, I was a guest on the Ruck Rover podcast last week. In the interview, we went through our All-Australian picks at the midpoint of the season. But I've had some time to stew, I've thought about the feedback, and I've made a few tweets. So in this video, if you'll have me, I'll show you the team I came up with for the mid-season All-Australian team. Let's check it out. Now, first up in the back line, I've chosen Shannon Hearn. Boom, Eagles fan, instant bias. No, to tell you the truth, he's the only Eagle I've picked in the side. I think Shannon Hearn's become a very good captain and that's why I'm actually picking him as All-Australian captain as well. He's always been an introverted guy, but I think he's been a huge development and how he's come across as a leader. But on the field, he's actually having an amazing season. He's averaging 26 possessions and eight marks a game. I think without a doubt, he's been the Eagles' best defender this year. At fullback, I've got Fremantle's Alex Pierce. Now, cruelly, he's had his season cut short by injury. However, I do think he's been the best lockdown defender in the league this season and he needs to be rewarded as such because he's not going to end up with a jumper at the end of the year anyway. He's had a bad injury run over the years, but he's been building nicely up to this point, so hopefully he has a fair crack at it next year. In the back pocket is the other best key defender this year, in my opinion, and that's Dylan Grimes. When Alex Rance went down with an ACL in round one, everyone freaked out and thought Richmond weren't going to cope. But this guy, Dylan Grimes, has stood up immensely and they've barely noticed the difference. He's a really rangely athletic type and he can play on talls and smalls, and personally, I just love watching him play. On my halfback flank, I have probably cheated and I've gone Lockie Whitfield, even though he's not really a defender anymore. If you don't like it, Shut up. He's not really the defensive sort, even though he used to play on the halfback flank. He's, he's not hugely accountable, but he is so damaging. In fact, he's one of the most damaging players in the league in space. He's averaging 28 disposals and nine marks a game, and gee, I hope he gets back on the park one soon. One of the very best players to watch in the league when in full flight. Center halfback, I've gone for Mark Blitzarves. Popular choice for one of the key back positions. He's tall, he's athletic, he does everything. The good thing about him is he's such a tough matchup for any forward, really, because he can play any style. He and the next guy I'm about to name, are a huge reason why Geelong have one of the best defences in the league. On the other back flank is, you guessed it, Tom Stewart. Not only is he miserly in nature, he's a really good defender, but he's also leading the league in kicks this year. At least he was when I wrote that down a week ago. He, he might not be anymore, I don't know. Nonetheless, he's averaging 24 disposals and seven and a half marks a game. On top of that, he's been an awesome fantasy pickup as well, averaging 96. So he rounds out my all Australian back line. On the one wing, we've got my man, Stephen Canelio. He's been building for a long period of time, former pick two, but this year he's really announced himself as one of the best midfielders in the game. He wins the ball through the midfield, but he can also drift forward and kick a goal too. He's averaging 28 disposals and nearly two goals a game. In the center spot, I've got another player who's been building for a period of time and that's Lockie Neal. He's always been a high production player. He's always been really good for Fremantle, but because he's been hidden away in the West when Fremantle weren't doing so well, probably hasn't got the plaudits he deserved. Up until now, I've never really been able to consider him an absolute A grader personally. I didn't think he had the same kind of impact as other A graders do. That being said, I do think he's gone to another level this year. He's averaging 33 possessions, eight clearances, and I think he's a bit more damaging than he ever was. He's yet to have an All-Australian Guernsey up until this season, so hopefully this year he notches his first. On the other wing, we have one of the absolute Brownlow favourites this year, and that's Tim Kelly. After his amazing debut season last year, I can't believe he's actually improved, but he's actually averaging four more disposals a game this year. He's proven he's not a one-hit wonder at all, and to be honest, it really is amazing how he never got drafted up until now. I have done a video on that topic, actually, and if you go back far enough, you can find it on the channel. He always had the talent, but never really had the production at waffle level up until about 2017, and gee whiz, Geelong will be really happy they took that pick. And I talked about it on the podcast as well, but gee, the decision not to trade him last year could be the difference between them winning a flag and not winning a flag. But moving on with the midfield, I have to pick the best ruckman in the game in my opinion, and that is Brody Grundy. This guy picks himself. He's high volume, high production. I don't feel like I really need to sell Brody Grundy to you. Grundy's first follower in this team will be Pat Cripps, the absolute bull. It's hard to imagine that Cripps has probably actually taken his game to a new level this year. He's averaging something like 29 disposals, nine clearances, and seven tackles. He has been well held in recent weeks, but he did have that game two weeks ago where it was probably the best individual performance this year. Do you follow Carlton? I'd want to improve sometime in the next three years because Pat Cripps isn't going to want to stay carrying them forever. Or he might. I don't know. I don't know the guy, but jeez. The next on baller in the team is Nat Fife, the second docker to be picked in my team. I was actually surprised to learn recently that the amazing career Fife's had 
He's actually averaging more disposals, contested possessions, and inside 50s this year. Like Cripps, Fife is an absolute match winner and can win games with his contested ability and his aerial ability as well. I don't actually have him that high in my Brownlow count because I think Fremantle will have a pretty good spread of contributors this year. But Fife is definitely still in the conversation for the best player in the competition. Now we're up to the forwards, and on the first forward flank, I've got Blaine Bokhorst. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's it's Travis Boak, can you imagine? But yes, the pair's favourite player, Travis Boak. He's having an unreal season and probably career best season, and which is ridiculous considering how old he is. I've talked about it before, it's been a popular narrative this year, but he's averaging 32 disposals and nearly a goal a game as well. He's also been very good for the old DT score. He's a forward and he's averaging 113 points this year, so I've definitely got him high up in the Brownlow count at the moment, which I'll show you at the end of this video. At centre half forward, we've got Geelong's Tom Hawkins having a great season. He's kicked 30 five goals, second in the Coleman, admittedly partially due to Geelong being such a good team this year, but I think between he and Cameron, they're clearly the best two forwards so far this season. His teammate Minch Duncan also slots a stanky spot on my half forward flank. Another Geelong player who you'd think is past his peak, but he's probably having a career best season. He wins the ball, he's averaging 25 and a half disposals a game, and he hits the scoreboard as well. Playing deep forward is... You guessed it, another Geelong player, Pat Dangerfield. And I'm definitely cheating by having him play as a deep forward, but he kind of does that sometimes anyway for Geelong. Another player I don't feel like I really need to sell to you. He probably picks himself with his performance this year. Averaging 27 disposals, over a goal a game. I think he was equal second with Pendlebury for inside 50s this year. That and the fact that he's probably one of the most explosive, exciting players in the league. In my opinion, the Brownlow count will go down to the wire this year between him and Tim Kelly. So there you go. Pat Dangerfield makes my All-Australian big surprise. In full forward, we've got Jeremy Cameron leading the league with 40 goals this season. Like Hawkins, he's the beneficiary of playing in a top two team and he gets on the end of some really good football but to be fair, he's still having a really good season. This is probably the season we've been expecting for Jeremy Cameron since he broke out as a teenager. He is a fantastic talent and hopefully he finishes off the season as well as he started it. The final spot on the field is the third docker, believe it or not, Mickey Walters. And how could you not include him after the game he had on the weekend? As an Eagles fan, Mickey Walters is my favorite Dockers player. I think he's been underrated for a period of time and he's such a good forward and midfield player. Obviously he had a massive game on the weekend with six goals and 25 possessions. He's averaging two goals a game, 21 possessions. Like I said before, Fremantle have probably got their top five or six players playing seriously good football this year, and he is absolutely one of them. Now it is time to go through our All-Australian bench, and first up, I've got the first reserve ruckman, Big surprise, Max Gorn. It did take Gorn a little bit to ease into this season, but he has gone big in recent weeks and is definitely the cleared option for second ruck. I did have a little look at Jared Witts for this position because I think he's actually been the best hit-out winner this season. That being said, I reckon Gorn offers more around the ground. He's had better efficiency. He's been involved in more scoring chains and he's had higher meters gained as well. So I think he's definitely the second best ruck. Next up is the evergreen Gary Ablett Jr. This year, Ablett's having the season I think we've been trying to foresee for the last few years. Since he hit about 32, we've all expected him to become more of a forward, but I think because of the teams he's played for, he's had to take more of a midfield role recently. That's up until this year where he is playing as a genuine forward. He's averaging two goals and had 21 possessions per game. The last two seasons, he's averaged 33 and 29 disposals a game, which shows how his role has changed. But he's doubled his goal average, and you know what? He's just one of the best players to watch when on song. I can't wait to see him turn it on in the finals this year, provided it's not against West Coast. For the next bench spot, I'm picking another vet, and that's Scott Pendlebury. Like I said before, he's like top two for inside 50s this year. He's only averaging 28 possessions a game, which doesn't sound a lot on paper, but he's always been one of those players who impacts a little bit more than the score sheet suggests. I love watching him play, and in my opinion, he's on track for another All-Australian Guernsey this season. The last bench spot I have given to a defender, and that's Bashar Hooli. Is this recency bias? Because he's had a real purple patch recently. I picked him over James Sicily and Luke Ryan, which is a little bit contentious. But he's averaging 29 possessions and six marks a game, and I think he's been a really, really important player for Richmond for an extended period of time. Is he going to do enough to hold his spot by the end of the year? I'm not sure. I'm also looking at Luke Ryan for this spot. That being said, he just gets the nod for me ahead of those boys. But there you go, boys and girls. That is the 22 I've picked as my mid-season All-Australian team. As usual, I invite you to tear me down in the comments. I absolutely guarantee I will have missed a player from the team you support that you think deserved it. But let us know in the comments. I appreciate it. Before we end the video, I did say I will take you through who's winning the awards at the moment for True Footy. It's me. I'm winning the award. Best presenter.
No, no, I'm actually talking about the True Footy Player of the Year Award and the Phantom Brownlow Medal Award that I've got going at the moment. For the True Footy Player of the Year Award, if you don't know how it works, the four of us who are involved in True Footy vote five to one on the best player of the round. So it's not the perfect voting system, but it is still producing an interesting result at the moment. We've actually got an unchanged top 10. Stephen Canelio is still our leader because Mickey Walters and Charlie Curno obviously dominated the votes this week and neither were in the top 10 going into this round. So that's why there's no change. For the Mock Brownlow count, however, we have seen a new face pop into the top five and that is Brad Crouch. Now that we're past halfway, as you can see, I've actually extended the table to a top 10 from a top five. Just makes it a little bit more interesting. Jack Billings is probably the biggest surprise there if you haven't been following the count much this year. He had a real purple patch at the start of the year and I did give him three votes for his huge game on the weekend. I'm thinking of doing a full Brownlow count at the end of the season right before the Brownlow. So uh, I'm thinking of a way to format that video, which makes it interesting. But um, yeah, hopefully you'll see that on the channel sometime in the finals. Now guys, like I alluded to earlier, I am going to Europe for all of July. As a result, I probably won't be able to stick to the consistent routine of content that I've been sticking to for God knows how long now. I will be taking my mic and camera, so please give me some credit for that, but I won't be able to do a Monday video or a Tuesday video like I usually am. I'm just gonna try and smash out videos when I get a chance. I'll be going to Dubai, Croatia and London, so I might even do a vlog and put that on my personal channel, Jesse Tom. There it is. There's the plug. If you want to subscribe, just description. Next week though, I reckon Bush and I will get together and do a whole series of videos. We're going to do a True Footy podcast, hopefully. Then, if he's a real good boy, I'll allow him in to True Footy React next week and we'll do our video tips together. That sounded weird. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe. As for me, I've just finished uni, so I'm going to go get pissed. Nah, just kidding. I'm working the next four days in a row. But I will see you guys very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.